So this video is all about riding tips for shorter riders. Now, I want you to keep in mind, we're not looking down on you if you're a short rider. This isn't a video about how to buy a shorter bike or shorten your seat or change your suspension. This is about the riding skills needed when the ground is a little farther away than you want it. And this is true whether you're a short rider or whether you're a tall guy. Let's get started. It starts with balance. Not dynamic balance. Once we're riding the motorcycle, it really doesn't matter how tall I am because the skill sets remain the same and the bike balances itself. The problem's when you're stopping and when you're starting. Understanding that this bike isn't as heavy as it appears to be is the first step. So once I take this bike, so this bike's somewhere around 600 pounds. Once I pull it off the side stand, then all of a sudden the bike becomes very light. So once it's up and off that side stand, what I want to do is become comfortable understanding, feeling, and sensing the balance of the motorcycle. The way I recommend you master doing this is by taking the motorcycle, standing upright, and then walking around the motorcycle, holding on to it with as light a touch as possible. And you can hold on to things like the windshield, the mirror, the turn signals, these sort of ultra sturdy points of the motorcycle. The more you relax, the easier it is. Don't be in a hurry. If the bike feels a little unstable, pause for a moment, find the balance, and then continue around. If you're stressed out and you're holding onto the bike very tightly, the bike's gonna sense it and it's gonna feel far less balanced. You need to be able to stay relaxed during the whole process. Understanding the balance of the motorcycle, becoming comfortable with your motorcycle so you're not wrestling it, so you don't think that that bike is overwhelming you is critical. Every other technique I teach for starting, stopping, mounting or dismounting a motorcycle starts from here. Just having a sense of balance of the motorcycle. My tip to you, learn to be comfortable with your motorcycle. Don't fight it. As long as you're using muscle, as long as you're, you're worried or stressed about the bike tipping over, everything else is going to be difficult. Master this basic skill set and everything else comes into line. All right, now, now that I sound like a mother who's giving you a lecture, let's go do some fun stuff. The rolling dismount is one of my signature moves and definitely one of my all-time favorite poser skills. It's also one of my top tips if you live at a lower elevation than I do. When you come to a stop and you put your foot down, you risk dropping it every single time. And the less length you have in the leg, the taller that seat, the more likely that happens. This skill set allows you to come in, throw the side stand, and dismount without ever putting your feet on the ground. It doesn't matter how short you are, you're always going to be able to touch the ground. And if the bike falls, that's okay. Just do it with class. Likely my absolute favorite tip for riders, short or tall, is never stop with your ass on the seat. That's a great thing to practice and to learn because when you need it, you need it to be there. Since the inseam of the seat is taller than the inseam of my leg. So when I drop, my feet have to splay out. The wider the bike, the wider the seat, the more it shortens my actual reach to the ground. So as I stand this bike up, this GSA, even at 32 inches, I'm just barely hitting uh, almost flat foot. Obviously, if you're a short rider, there may be no ground in sight. What happens here is we need to slip off to the side of the motorcycle. So instead of dropping straight to the seat, I drop off to the side. I take the inside of my leg and I hook it over the top of the seat. The outside leg, if possible, will touch the peg. That'll really help when we start to get back up onto the bike. For some of you, once we do this and we drop down below that height, our outside foot is likely to be quite a bit higher. It's not on the peg at all. This makes it a little more challenging to get up to the pegs, 
but there's a technique for that as well. To illustrate this, I handicapped myself and I took a, a curb, about a five inch curb, and I rode along the curb. And each time I came to a stop, I would come to a stop and I dropped my foot on the low side of the curb. By dropping down that extra five inches, it put me down to about five six. It made me quite a bit shorter, uh, five six to five five. Actually, let's see, let's see, I'm six foot. You take away five inches, five inches, six foot, that's 12 inches each, and that's a six, and then that's a seven. So I guess I'm five seven. All right, so, so much for the math. All right, let's go away with that. 12. So six, I'm five seven. Turns out riding isn't just about riding skills, it's also, also about strategy. When I'm riding, I'm always looking for where I'm going to end up and where I'm going to stop. And I'm always looking for the high ground. I'm looking for the tall rock, I'm looking for the curb. I might look for a, a fire hydrant in a cornfield, but it's always the high ground that I'm searching for. And on the, on the trails, I'll always park up near the edge so I can put my foot up on the high side of the trail. If that's not available, I might use a tree. But I'm always looking for the high ground. Traditionally, we're taught to mount and dismount off the left side of the motorcycle, and we have a tendency to always use the ground. So I step down on the ground, and then, and then I crawl off the motorcycle, which makes it really challenging. And if I have duffel bags, it makes it even more difficult. So when I do this, instead of trying to climb up over the motorcycle, start using the foot peg. Just stand up on that to get the extra height so you can step off. In fact, you can even use the tank or the handlebars, just kind of brace as you step up onto the motorcycle and it makes it much, much easier just to get on and off. And many of you have mentioned that you notice I like to use the high side of the motorcycle, so the other side, and I do. And the reason is, when I'm on the left side of the motorcycle like this, the motorcycle is leaning into me, which means I'm climbing up and over the motorcycle instead of using the angle of the motorcycle to help me. From this side, the motorcycle's already leaning in that direction, and the foot peg is sitting higher, which means from this direction I can step up and across the motorcycle. Same thing for a dismount, to mount off the high side, it's a lot easier to step across the seat and down. Not only for short riders, but also when you have a lot of luggage on the back. It's just a whole lot easier. So get away from the idea that you've always got to be on one side or the other. Loosen up your mindset a little bit. Get creative. In fact, not only can you use the foot pegs, but if you really want to, you can also use the front tire and you can kind of crawl up so that way and across the bike if you want. And then, whew, there we go. And then we can mount the motorcycle like that or or if you really have a good idea you could always you know use the back of the motorcycle and you could mount off the back of the bike but get away from thinking about traditional one side just the left side all right now where'd my helmet go oh here we go it's not so hard is it This is a call out and a big thank you for all those Patreon fans that have joined me last week. Also, those people who came and did adventure camps and training tours with me this year. The tips that you left and the contributions to Patreon helped me fix the drone, get it back up in the air. So we had some drone footage for this last video. Thank you. That was really nice to have that self-tracking mode. As many of you have figured out, I do my own video. So if that drone doesn't track, it makes it really difficult to get those shots. 
My next goal is to improve the audio. The Bluetooth mic I have has virtually no voice control, so I wanna clean that up and see if we can get a, a little better mic sound. Also, if you're interested on the Patreon, for those that are fan club members or above, I'm starting next month a monthly podcast that is with one of those Patreon supporters where we get to do an online interview or discussion for half an hour to an hour. And I'll be putting that on my website at brighttax.com for everybody to enjoy. I'm really excited to hear the questions, the comments, the discussion. Some of the best information comes out during those sort of uh, non-scripted, non-planned discussions. I'm, I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be a great asset for all of you that follow the type of content that I produce. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Make sure you do that. If you're interested in helping me not chase the YouTube algorithms and you want to support what I do, please consider joining me on Patreon. And more important than anything, please take the information that I share, that I pass on to you, make your dreams come true, share the information with others that'll listen. If you like what I do, keep watching. If you don't like what I do, keep your comments to yourself and don't thumbs down the video. Go watch somebody else's stuff. This is about making the world a better place, making riders better riders, and I appreciate every one of you that watches this channel and that subscribes.